Hey everyone, have you ever done something that you regret? I know that I have, and while learning from your mistakes is a great measure of progress, there are some that you really shouldn't have to learn the hard way, especially in Godot. And that's why today, I'm going to be going over 5 tips that I've learned in Godot that will help newcomers starting out in the engine. Let's begin. My first tip is to build demo projects to learn concepts before trying to make a real game. This is definitely the number one thing that I would recommend to newcomer developers in general, not just in Godot. If you have no experience developing games but want to get to the point of releasing games to others, it's much more gratifying and realistic to take baby steps along the way. In my experience, when I was first starting out, I built a demo project that was an absolute mess in hindsight, but taught me so many of the little quirks that Godot has to offer, and it was actually a blast to work on. But after that though, I immediately went to work on a free Android game that I wanted to put on the Google Play Store, and I just wasn't ready yet. So as a result, I actually ended up stalling out on the project for a long time after just months of just grinding gears, and actually ended up working on other smaller games before finally coming back to it this year. So, in my opinion, it's much better to just take baby steps with small demo projects than to try and take on one massive project that could take years and end up burning you out. It'll be much more fun and your code quality will improve so much by making smaller projects that by the time you do decide that you want to work on a real, larger game, you might have the skills to really do it. Shifting gears to something that's a little more Godot-centric, my next tip is just to use your plugins, but wisely. This is one of the biggest perks of having an open source engine. The community constantly comes up and releases plugins for anybody to use in their projects for free. Many of these are amazing too and will save you so much development time. As a result, you shouldn't be afraid of installing some plugins from time to time to your project and just seeing what happens because the results can turn out very well. Now, you will need to be careful of adding too many plugins and just bloating your project, especially in cases where you may not need the plugins at all. For example, concepts such as save data, loading, and player inventories are typically some that you'll want to see customized to your particular game, so a plugin might not work in that situation. You also have to look out for the 20-ish percent of plugins that just don't work properly for whatever reason. However, if you are a newcomer, then installing a plugin for a topic that you have not mastered yet and just looking at the code is actually one of the most helpful things that you can do to expand your developer knowledge. So basically, use your plugins, but be careful. Now, moving on to my third tip, which is to limit AI-generated code usage, because ChatGPT is horrible for Godot. Something to note about Godot right away is that 1. It changes very often, and 2. GDScript is a little bit more obscure than something like c -sharp or Java or any of your other mainstream programming languages. As a result, AI coding tools like ChatGPT are just not very good at helping out with Godot projects. Occasionally it can create working code, but more likely than not, it's going to give you code that is based off of Godot 3, and that's if it works in the first place. As a result, if you end up using ChatGPT with Godot, you will 1. be waiting for a long time while it tries to generate bad code, and then 2. spending a lot of time debugging the bad code that it gives you that probably just sent you in the complete wrong direction for your project. The only reason why I'm not saying that you shouldn't use it at all is that every now and then, it'll give you an incredibly smart solution to a problem that you wouldn't have thought of normally, but that is extremely rare. ChatGPT and Godot should be treated like a last resort, Hail Mary kind of situation at best. Moving on to my fourth tip for starting out in Godot, which is don't be afraid of the built-in scripts. This one may seem counterintuitive at first, but trust me, you do not want the scripts folder in your game to have a million files. It will become an incomprehensible mess and will slow you down over time, especially if you have a large project. Fortunately, Godot offers a solution to this in the form of the built-in script. What this does is it applies a script to a particular node in a scene that can only apply to that particular node. It will not appear in your scripts folder or really anywhere else for that matter. This can be really helpful in cases where you just need a simple script to house a single function, or if your script is just not going to be reused often. Where you primarily want a regular script is for reusable code that will be spread across your project. Otherwise, you should at least consider the built-in options. This one is really a stylistic choice and is by no means a mandate of any sort, but it's a change that helped me speed up my development considerably once I switched over to some built-in scripts. And my fifth and final tip for starting out in Godot is to learn from other developers. I feel like this one is somewhat common sense, but if you want to get better at anything, you should study the people who are already really good at it. There's a lot of game jams, open source demos, and tutorials out there that are incredibly helpful for helping you get better as a developer. And a lot of it is free. 
What I will say is that there is a lot of gatekeeping in the video game industry when it comes to more complex topics, and while being able to learn on your own and do research is probably the most helpful skill you can learn as a developer, there's also some really good information out there and opportunities to work with people. You just have to put yourself out there. People love collaborating with each other in indie development and will reach out to you if they know you're there. It's not at all like a job hunt where getting a response out of an employer can feel just impossible sometimes. So basically, my advice is just to put yourself out there and good things will tend to follow. By the way, just as a full disclaimer, when I say study the people who are really good at it, I am not referring to myself whatsoever. Compared to some of the absolute geniuses out there, I am a code peon, so please do not take that the wrong way. But anyways, that's all the tips that I've got for today. I hope that this helps you out as you begin your game development journey, or maybe if you've already started your journey, that you learned something new. But just let me know in the comments what you thought and if you enjoyed it, and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.